This week, Tag Heuer has reissued its original Formula One design from 1986. If you follow the channel, you'll know that I'm a huge Tag Heuer fan. And I don't think I was the only one who was ready for this reissue. I think it's a huge opportunity for a brand like Tag Heuer to tap into some of that hype that we've seen around the launch of the Moonswatch. But I think they might have blown it. The original Tag Heuer Formula One was launched in 1986. It had a 35mm stainless steel case and a range of brightly coloured plastic dive bezels and matching straps, although later versions were also available on bracelets. It was an accessible, affordable and fun Swiss sports watch, released just a few years after the launch of the original Swatch watches. When they first launched in the UK, they were priced at just £85, which, allowing for inflation, is about £250 in today's money. I remember when I was in my teens that a mate of mine had one, and I was just so envious of it. But at the time, I was putting every penny that I could save into buying new guitars and amps. And then last year, I saw George Bamford talking about them. I think it was on an episode of About Effing Time. And I spent several weeks after that browsing eBay, thinking that I might pick one up. And then just last week, I saw my buddy Andrew McCutcheon post on Instagram that he'd picked one up as well. One of the grain yellow ones, which is just the coolest colour combination. And that really reignited my interest in them once again. But knowing that a new one was on the way, I thought I'd wait and see what was released. Now, the new old Formula One has been reissued as a collaboration with Kith. Now, if, like me, you're old enough to remember the launch of the original Tag Heuer Formula One, then, like me, you'll probably be too old and out of touch to know what Kith is. But don't worry, because Google is your friend. And I now know that Kith is a US-based streetwear brand. They've launched 10 versions in a range of bright colours, some of which are available on straps and others on bracelets, just like the original. But now the straps are silicon rubber rather than plastic. And whereas the original had a plastic crystal, this new one gets sapphire. Many of the original features still remain, like the 35mm case size and the quartz movement. But the dials feature this pinstripe design. They've also replaced the tag in the Tag Heuer logo with Kith. And under the pinion, you've got the words Just Us in this script font. And of course, limited edition. Because of course, these watches are a limited release, with the different coloured versions being available in different quantities, which I think is really odd and confusing. It'd take me far too long to explain which of the different versions are available in what quantities. And frankly, I can't be bothered. But you can go to the Tag Heuer website if you really need to know. Now, whether you buy one on the rubber strap or one of the versions on a bracelet, the price here in the UK is £1,350. And I think that's just one of the areas where Tag Heuer might have missed the mark. As I said earlier, if anything stood a chance of capturing some of the hype that we've seen from the Moonswatch, then it had to be this Tag Heuer Formula One. The Moonswatch has proven that there's a huge appetite for fun and colourful and affordable watches from the big Swiss brands. I'd argue that Tag Heuer is just as well known outside of the watch community as Omega is, and Formula One has seen a huge growth in interest since Netflix came up with Drive to Survive. What's more, Tag Heuer is one of the main sponsors of the F1 team that's dominated the sport in recent years, and I think all of these factors combined offered a huge opportunity. But the price would have to be right, and £1,350 isn't. For the US market, the Kith collaboration might add value, but it does nothing for me, and I'd like to have seen Tag Heuer go it alone, or tap into that F1 partnership and maybe do a Red Bull Racing collab, but at a much more wallet-friendly price. 
If they did that and the RRP was 350 or even £400, I could see them selling a ton of these over the next year. Could this Kith collaboration be a precursor to a non-limited release? Well, maybe. But if the Kith edition is priced at £1,350, then a non-limited version couldn't really be less than around £900. And that's still way more than most people could bring themselves to spend on a plastic quartz watch. But guys, over to you. Comment below and tell me what you think. Oh, and do me a solid and give this video a like.